as the electrification megatrend progresses in India, the market is also witnessing the birth of some new segments and sub-segments, which is also a reflection of the evolution in terms of the cons consumer demands and consumer tastes. And to address to these uh, needs and also to prepare for its next phase of growth, Aether Energy has showcased its latest uh, platform called EL. And uh, to tell us more about the strategy behind uh, with this platform and the larger game plan, we have with us Swapnil Jain, co-founder and CTO. Swapnil, thanks for sparing the time. <coughs> tell us first of all, uh, the, uh, the rationale behind uh, EL, uh, how long did it take, it take you to develop it? And with this, what are the uh, stories that you're going to build over this? Yeah. So, uh, honestly, the, the, the current 450 platform was built in, in 2015, that's almost a decade uh, back, uh, with the first uh, uh, sort of people trying to build a, a completely ground up lithium ion battery powered EV uh, in India. We were doing it for the first time um, and uh, a lot of uh, and a lot of the product, the platform itself was designed for a particular uh, product. Sporty, uh, um, sporty, catering to the youth. Yeah, they're catering to the youth, the 450 sort of product. We, we call it like built for us. We used to call it built for us because <laughs> we are a bunch of 20 year old and yes. we're like, we want a vehicle which which we enjoy. Huh. And that's what, uh, that's what we built it uh, for. Uh, it had its uh, a lot of limitations, especially when we had to uh, build a um, uh, build a, a family product, mm. Vista. Then we started uh, realizing that okay, uh, trying to build it on 450 is is uh, gonna be difficult. We are still able to uh, uh, pull it off. Um, <clears throat> but uh, now it's been a uh, it's been a uh, decade and and a lot of learnings in terms of customer preferences, manufacturability, serviceability, cost, supply chain. All of that has evolved uh, quite a lot over the, over the last uh, decade, and that is something which is now <coughs> uh, giving us the opportunity to actually relook at the platform uh, altogether, uh, addressing a lot of the the the, uh, the limitations which the current platform would have, and that's where the uh, the EL platform comes in. And uh, if you want to define a platform which if you chop. One important feature of the platform is uh, is versatility, because uh, there are many many customer preferences from a sporty to maxi to uh, to a family product to uh, something else probably uh, altogether. You want to you don't want to now build a platform for a product. You want to build a platform which can incorporate multiple products uh, altogether. At the same time, you want to address aspects of serviceability, manufacturability, supply chain, cost, all of them, and and sort of optimize uh, any kind of uh, challenge which you would have with the, with the previous architecture right. itself. So that's where the, the work on the EL uh, platform started uh, and, and here we are today talking about. So this know. EL platform, the first product on which will, as you said, will be out in the market next festive season, 2026, it's right? Targeting towards that, yeah. And, uh, and uh, this, this uh, uh, platform will, uh, will be good to serve for how many years? That's it. See, every platform is, is typically designed uh, uh, to work for at least uh, uh, five to seven years. And now, uh, and that's what we would, would like to aim for. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, like that's where the, the time it takes to build a platform is to ensure that mm. it can last uh, for that long. So, yeah, we would, we would not look at and, it. And the frequency of uh, products on, on this platform, um, of course, that will also be uh, a fa determining factor, will also be the market condition, but generally, at what uh, run rate would you like to have a new, new product on that? Uh, no, I mean, uh, see, we have, we have already demonstrated with Rista that uh, uh, with about around 18 months is when we are able to build a completely new product on an existing platform. And that platform was not even designed for, mm. uh, for versatility. So but in this case, it could be even shorter. It, yeah, we would, we would want to do it uh, uh, shorter. Uh, would we launch it? That's, that's something mm. to be still seen. But from a capability perspective, yes, we should. Once we decide, we should be able to do it in, in, in about 18 months. And uh, one major difference is, unlike the 450's uh, uh, frame, uh, right. the, uh, the platform, uh, that's aluminum frame, this is steel. Yeah. So there'll be some kind of you know, trade-offs in terms of uh, weight or engineering and therefore, therefore readability. So, uh, uh, and also in terms of the versatility, you said it could go as low as what? A two kilowatt battery pack up to what, five or so? Right. So that's a wide range, but in terms of the uh, body frame, so uh, is it? Uh, could it be that you uh, know you you are kind of uh, doing some engineering uh, in interventions to kind of offset the trade-offs? 
Yeah, so <clears throat> that's where the, the the platform development sort of comes in. First, to address your first uh, question on the, the aluminum frame, uh, a, a good product mm. is always trade off. You have to just do the right uh, right trade off, right? Like, uh, if you don't do any tra trade off, then then you are not actually designing a, a mm. good product because not everybody wants uh, wants everything. Uh, it's not, and, it's and not wholesome enough then. Yeah, no, and, <laughs> and if you try to put everything in one product, yeah. it becomes actually a confused product, and you yeah. uh, you want a more always want to build sharper products, and that's why we have been very very clear about. 450 was very, 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 very sharp, right? Like it, mm. it, it, there was no. When you look at a 450, you would never have a doubt whether it is a, uh, it's a family vehicle or a sporty vehicle. It yeah. is a sporty vehicle. It looks like a sporty vehicle. It rides like a sporty vehicle, and it, it excites you like a, uh, mm. a sporty vehicle. So, <clears throat> um, so when we cho chose the Yield platform, we were, we were very clear that we are not trying to build the pinnacle of uh, performance uh, mm. with the with the new platform. We are trying to build uh, a product which is more focused towards uh, 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 towards uh, mass uh, audience which is more uh, cost efficient manufacturing efficient service uh, more practical if, mm. if i were to call it, call it uh, and that's what we built the uh, uh, the, the el platform uh, in mind hence there we did not feel a need for having uh, uh, an aluminum frame in this particular product because the customer will not even appreciate having an aluminum mm. frame uh, uh, also it would cost more also than the cost of the problem there are other things on the product which cost mm, more. Mm, mm. It's not about cost. It's about does does that particular. What's the objective we're trying to meet? Appreciate that. If mm, they don't mm. appreciate that, that cost is not. If they appreciate that, yes, yeah. I will put extra cost. That's right. not a, that's yeah. not a uh, problem uh, at all. Mm. And uh, and to your point, yeah, from two kilowatt to five kilowatt hour, that's where exactly the the, the difficulty in building up a platform uh, comes in. You want uh, if uh, if you if you load a for two kilowatt hour battery pack or you load a five kilowatt hour battery pack, if you load an LFP battery pack or you load a uh, NMC battery pack. It should it should support uh, all of that, and that's where the the early days of the platform engineering is about uh, optimizing that. And also, I've observed the other feature is that you have integrated the charger and the motor controller here. So, uh, would would that make uh, Ether the first uh, in the segment to offer something like this? And uh, what what uh, led you to come up with this idea? And uh, how challenging was it? Yeah, integrated motor controller and charger uh, would be would be one of its uh, kind uh, offering by uh, by Ether. Uh, we we always believe that uh, uh, onboard charging is uh, helps a customer in a lot of uh, in a lot of aspects because you don't have to carry the charger in your boot, so it, it frees up a, a lot of uh, space. The traditional ways of doing it, where we put a charger and a motor controller separately into the uh, into the vehicle, which is what our first generation mm. of vehicle was. Uh, we were not very convinced that that's a great customer experience because it was increasing the the weight, it was increasing the the cost, uh, and it was also taking up a lot of space on the vehicle. Uh, and it was not something which we which we were uh, liking it uh, as much. So hence, in the uh, in the early days, we decided to uh, remove it and make it an onboard charger. But we always wanted to have an onboard charger as a as a product feature. And hence, we started uh, work on integrating these two components together because about about forty percent of the the below material is is similar. And when when you're charging, you're not riding, and when you're riding, you're not charging. Mm -hmm. They are exclusive uh, uh, use cases. So why look at these two as two independent things and not combine them into one single uh, unit? That saves a lot of space. Uh, that uh, that gives you a, a, a lot of uh, flexibility on the on the uh, packaging, and makes a great customer experience where you can actually do an onboard charging with a very simple uh, set of uh, wire. That that's what the uh, the uh, rationale was, the rationale. right? And also uh, in one of our earlier conversations, uh, Sapnil, you had, you had said that uh, Indian. Uh, electric two-wheeler makers, uh, particularly Aether, uh, have already kind of uh, showcased to the global industry in terms of its capability, and you, are all, you would like to call yourself at right at the front line when it comes to quality, cost, and technology. So with this new platform, does that uh, give you, uh, kind of heighten your ambitions to have a uh, international, more international play, and really go in a very serious uh, Way about it. Right now, you are there in some neighboring countries, but at a more larger scale, maybe. Yeah, one aspect of versatility was also international, serving international market. That's uh, that's definitely uh, a part of our uh, uh, platform design. Uh, I, uh, and as 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 you said, uh, I think we are already there. We don't we don't need any new platforms to actually serve the the international market. It's more about uh, focus, which 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 we would have. Um, and and, not, and as, as I said, not just us. I think every Indian EV OEM today 
is that a great place to be able to serve the international market and, and that's what our ambitions should be. Right. Talking about non-market, uh, another uh, issue which is industry collectively is facing is the supply chain uh, challenge uh, primarily, you know, so sourced out of, uh, I mean, the rare earth magnet sourced out of China. So how, how much have you managed to insulate yourself from that and what kind of, you know, measures uh, helped you to achieve that? And to preempt such problems, uh, what are the strategies that you are laying out? Yeah, so uh, one strategy which we have always uh, adopted is having uh, uh, dual sourcing for, at least dual sourcing for critical components. That has given us uh, uh, a good good respite uh, in this particular uh, uh, situation. Uh, by side, the way, uh, uh, did you have to face any kind of disruption in production? Uh, uh, any loss of production? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's, it's mostly, we were able to manage uh, uh, everything which, uh, which which was needed. Uh, yeah. So uh, 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 dual sourcing was, was something which which really uh, helped us. And uh, uh, actively managing the supply chain by, uh, again, that's where our, our vertical integration sort of uh, comes into into play. That we were able to uh, quickly move from a, a heavy rare earth to rare earth, uh, to heavy rare earth free magnets, uh, which has no restrictions uh, in terms of uh, uh, supply chain. Mm. Uh, so uh, yeah, these these sort of measures has has helped us to uh, navigate through this crisis swiftly. And, and to preempt such problem in the future, are you kind of working on any, because I know they take time, at least three, if not you know, four or five years or so. So uh, are you working towards uh, identifying any alternate? Uh... Oh, we have been working on it uh, even before this, uh, hmm. uh, this crisis happened. We have to be convinced uh, enough that it can, uh, it, is a, it is a technology which is, uh, which does not compromise on the product. You can always build a, a, a ferrite motor hmm. uh, with a compromise on the on the product, but that's not what what you would want. You want your product to be as as is and and uh, if not uh, better, yeah, if not if not better. So um, and and that's where uh, we are, all our focus is on, um, including trying to uh, mitigate the supply chain uh, itself, trying to look at an alternate supply uh, supply for magnets uh, itself. Along with that, already the exploration was going on. Probably, if nothing else, it has made it even faster to look at some of those uh, technologies which can help us uh, and reduce on the, our, our dependence on the error, but not compromising on the product performance. Can you share some examples of what could be the alternate uh, technologies? Uh, I, I, I will not be able to talk uh, a lot about it, uh, but there are uh, there are aspects of uh, 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 sort of permanent magnet assisted uh, uh, motors where it's not completely uh, uh, error uh, uh, dependent. Uh, error dependent. And those and and few other things which we are working on. Uh, I do want to say that uh, before we have a good breakthrough. We are not. We have not never been a a nice OEM. proof of concept. <laughs> 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 We've never been an OEM who uh, promised too much before uh, before it's, it's right. uh, stable. Great. Uh, I mean, even as you progress towards becoming a full-fledged OEM, I, I'm sure you, know, you will have a slightly different uh, how do I say character as a as a as a, a tool maker. Uh, but uh, in this uh, EL platform, is there a count of how many patents you have filed for? Yeah. Quite a bit. I don't have a count. I can probably get you uh, get get back to you. But mm. yeah, a, a, a lot of patent last year were find on the on the platform uh, itself. Okay. And how big is the team now for R and D and engineering? Um, about uh, eight hundred. Oh, good. Uh, congratulations on the development, and look forward to uh, seeing the products in the new platform. But uh, and uh, overall, uh, the uh, EV story, the two wheelers in the two wheeler space for India. How how would you define it as of now, and uh, and in the in the near to midterm, what what kind of changes, what kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, scale do you think it, it could reach? Oh, we are at a uh, uh, we are at a great place because we have good good uh, products across uh, uh, product offering across multiple OEMs. It's always good to have multiple offerings because uh, that's when the kind of customer confidence sort of goes up. There is, uh, well, uh, and every OEM is doing a lot of investment in this. Also helps with the with the customer uh, 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 confidence. Um, uh, tech wise, we are improving. Lithium ion prices are are falling uh, by the day. Uh, customers' uh, confidence on the products is also increasing when they see more and more people uh, owning it. Now the penetration in tier two, tier three. Uh, they are always always a tier two, tier three penetration of EVs, but it was more about the the low end of the products. But now the high-end products are also penetrating, and, and people are really appreciating. And I think a lot of the uh, demand will actually start coming from now tier to tier three because uh, 
um, that's where anyway the bulk of the market lies. That's where they also do a lot of traveling uh, mm-hmm. uh, in in those because you have to do a lot of travel between like villages, right. satellite towns, and all of all of that. So uh, they actually have a, a, a fair bit to gain by moving to moving to electric. So we are at a very very uh, interesting interesting place. Should just take off. I mean. Okay. On that note, Shafnil, always a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking to you as well. Best wishes. Yeah.